We just witnessed a two millimeter reduction in C1, C2 instability within four days of treatment. Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Hutchison. Today, I wanna to share with you a case study from last week. We had a patient fly down from Washington, DC for a literally four day intensive therapy where we treated him every day. And in the four days, we were able to reduce his lateral overhang or C1, C2 instability by a collective two millimeters, which was approximately a one millimeter reduction to each side. During the course of his four days with us, which we had given him a full week, he was about to head back to school and he goes to school in Europe and he was here uh, just for that week, but we got him to actually be able to leave a day early because his instability reduced by a collective two millimeters. His brain fog was reducing significantly. His curvature was improving. We worked on his spinal curvature, fit him with weights correctly, and also did a lot of dry needling to the suboccipital musculature and also muscles in the shoulders and in the lower neck. The suboccipital musculature consists of both the obliquus capitis group and the rectus capitis group. And then we also factor in the semispinalis, the splenius, multifidi, rotators, intertransversarii, interspinalis, whether the levator scapulae is involved, the trapezius, often we find pectoral involvement with pulling the neck out of position and contributing to upper cervical instability and all sorts of neurologic symptoms that can come from the neck. So this case was pretty amazing because in the course of the last three years that I've worked alongside or collaborated with regenerative medicine doctors, it's been very rare and honestly, I can't say that I've seen a two millimeter reduction in C1, C2 overhang in one week. And it's typically because we don't retest every week, but it typically has taken a much longer period of time in order to see such a significant improvement, not only in symptoms such as brain fog and clicking in the neck, which reduced significantly, but also in an objective finding of C1, C2 instability reducing by over two millimeters in four days. We're seeing this trend in a lot of our patients that we're working on the tendons. So a big part of spinal stability is the tendons and the muscles and the other half is a ligament. So we're seeing that in certain individuals, the only part that they might be missing or lacking could be the tendinous component of spinal stability. And as evidence from this case study, we've shown a collective two millimeter reduction in C1 instability within four days of working on spinal curvature and treating tendinopathy, where there are tendons that are weak, degenerated, frayed, and causing abnormal pulling because when they're weak, they can't do their job to balance the pull from the front of the neck. So the back of the neck is weak and they fall forward and it leaves you in a more susceptible or vulnerable place for excessive motion to occur. Up until now, most people have thought that any break in George's line or any lateral overhang was primarily or only caused from ligamentous instability. And what we're showing and continuing to prove again and again now in our office is that overhang instability and or breaks in George's line, which we'll be releasing more case studies on that soon, can be caused at least in part and sometimes primarily from tendinopathies, degenerated tendons, which cause abnormal pulling on bones. And then eventually, when those tendons cause the muscle to atrophy or weaken, can also leave them vulnerable or susceptible to excessive motion. Now, typically somebody that has tendinopathy for a long period of time will also get some laxity in those ligaments and very well could be a good candidate for injections or treatments to the ligaments. But once again, here's another case study from our office showing people that have not had to get any work done ligamentously and are obtaining full resolution of their care with these very difficult neurologic conditions by working primarily on imp many of our patients travel from other cities, other states, and other parts of the world. And with that in mind, they've already tried the alignment portion of structural health and they've done something to try to work on their curve. And many of them have done some kind of an injection therapy in order to improve stability. But one of the missing parts has been treating the tendons correctly in a way that balances the pulling on the spine that really restores the curve for good, that helps to improve the venous drainage from the neck. That also takes pressure off the vertebral artery because when the rectus capitis and the obliquus capitis are weak and damaged and frayed and the neck falls forward, it also can produce a very mild or even kind of a subclinical uh, bow hunters type of a syndrome where the vertebral artery is just being irritated and bothered and you know, it makes you feel pulsatile symptoms. And if you get up really fast, you might feel like you're gonna pass out. And it's not always from one place that you can get 
those kind of vascular neurologic symptoms. So again, thank you for being part of our journey. And today was pretty awesome to share the story with you as we just witnessed a two millimeter reduction in C1, C2 instability within four days of treatment where we primarily focused on dry needling to tendons and on improving the cervical spine curvature. We did do a little bit of adjusting on this individual, but typically when we have the curvature and the stability, the alignment is a lot more easy to maintain. So we worked really hard on getting that good curvature, on getting stability through tendons, reducing abnormal pulling from muscles. And this patient, we've got to say, is just well on his way to full recovery after four days. And but when he comes back home for a winter break, we'll try to get him back down here and see if we can do a little follow-up to see how he's still doing. Thank you, and we'll see you soon. Thank you.